Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Diamond Heights is the fourth scenario in Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and the first one with a park value goal. You need to get to 20,000 in 3 years or 200,000 if you play it in Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 using OpenRCT2. But what if we weren't satisfied by just passing the goal normally? What if we wanted to get as much park value as possible in those 3 years? To do that we need to make a ton of money, so it's advertising time. With all ads except the free entry one running at all times and an entry price of 60 euros will make tens of thousands from the entrance every month. The park layout that we start out with isn't very good at making money so it all has to go. The dueling looping coasters can stay for now as they are the target of some of the advertisements. We can get even more guests from the natural guest generation if we manage to keep the park rating high enough. We could build a big park or a long queue line to handle all the guests but that's expensive both in terms of money and more importantly space. A better method is to dispose of the guests as soon as they enter the park. As we've seen in a previous video guests have about a 40% chance of falling through the path if the piece right after the entrance is sloped upwards. If we put this underground we will automatically get rid of 40% of the guests by just dropping them into the void which doesn't count as killing so the park rating will be unaffected. The other guests are easily removed by having a free transport ride where the exit leads into the void. I didn't do this all very smoothly and had a few hiccups along the way but halfway April it's all working perfectly fine. Now that we have our money making scheme working we need to determine the best way to get as much park value as possible. The method we will use is the tried and trusted park value bomb. All three main stats of a ride contribute to the park value it gives without any limit. Excitement almost always contributes the most but intensity is much much cheaper to get a lot of. Therefore the best way to get a lot of park value for little money is to make extremely intense rides which are called park value bombs. So far the best coaster type we have for this is the looping coaster which can get over 21 intensity by doing 7 long laps on this tiny design. You can go up to 20 laps in OpenRCT2 but when you save and build the design again it will only have 4 laps. The current track save format cannot save any more than 7 laps so as a result the number of laps your ride is saved with is the number it has mod 8. I could easily increase this to 20 after building the ride but for some reason that only occurred to me much later in the playthrough. Anyway, each of these gives about 34,000 park value, so just 6 of them is enough to beat Diamond Heights. But we won't stop at 6, or even 60 for that matter. No, we will continue building until we run out of money, space or time. The park value a ride gives decreases as it ages, but there is a trick to prevent that too. A ride doesn't age if it has never been opened, and unopened rides still give park value if their stats have been calculated. At the start of June the natural guest generation has kicked into full gear along with the guest generation from advertisements. With all the unhappy guests from the start disposed of the park rating has recovered nicely. Early on the entrance price was also way too high but opening the first few park value bombs solved that problem too. It does mean we will need to replace them when they break down but that shouldn't happen too often. A week later the advertisements run out and since we can now advertise for one of our park value bombs we no longer need agoraphobia and claustrophobia. With pain in my heart, which I don't feel when drowning guests by the way, I deleted these iconic roller coasters. They will be missed. At the end of August we have built 61 looping coasters and with that we have reached 2 million park value, 10 times the original goal. And that in only a quarter of the allotted time. This game really is super easy if you know what you're doing, which is why I do fun challenges like this. Even though we have already 10 tupots to goal, we have only just gotten started. 
I have been researching new coasters to see if we would unlock anything better and halfway September we did, but not in the form I expected. It's not a new coaster type, but rather a new train for the looping coaster, reversed roller coaster trains. I didn't even know that these existed, as they were only included in Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and not in 2, but they are very useful here. Because going backwards is scarier, these trains give a 15% boost to the intensity rating and even a 30% boost to the nausea rating, which will both help increase the park value by a lot. At this point I realized I might as well make the coasters all do 20 laps, and with that and the reversed train, the ride gets more than 33 intensity and 21 nausea. These improved park value bombs give about 54,000 park value instead of the 34,000 they used to give. With these new rides we managed to have almost exactly 3 million park value at the end of year 1. Since we didn't immediately start building the rides, reaching the magical 10 million park value is still within the realms of possibility. When building these rides, I noticed that the game's algorithm for when you can and can't build a saved design is a bit weird. For example, if I want to build another coaster right here with the turn above the station of the other, the game will automatically shift the entire design up so that it will fit. However, if I want to build it one tile further to the left, instead of shifting it up even more, now it says that the entrance of the other right is in the way. This limits the number of coasters we can fit in the park, as custom building all of these rides takes way too long. I try to fit as many coasters as I can in the park and sometimes that results in really interesting setups such as this coaster which has its station going through the loop of another coaster. That's not the only time something like that happened as park value bomb number 48 is already threading the loop of number 5. By September year 2 we have reached almost 6 million park value and also a problem. With 114 looping coasters, the park is full. I cannot fit any more pre-built looping coaster park value bombs in the park. As I was wallowing in my shame of most likely not being able to hit 10 million park value, I got an idea. I've played this scenario before and I remembered that if you research thrill rides for long enough you will get access to the launched freefall. The launched freefall is an even better park value bomb than the looping coaster. A 145 meter tall design with a downward launch mode gives about 40,000 park value. This is less than the looping coaster but it is also cheaper and more importantly in this case has a much smaller footprint. We should be able Able to fit lots of these freefalls everywhere. Actually, while writing this video and looking up the numbers of the park value for the different rides, I discovered that these freefalls give their full 53,000 park value instead of just 40,000. Usually, when you build a multiple of the same ride type, the park value they provide gets reduced by 25%, hence the reduction to 40,000. However, I found out that this only happens if at least two rides are opened, and since none of these freefalls will be opened, they all give the full 53,000 park value. Around this time the miniature railway broke down, and since the exit leads straight into the void, it is unreachable for any mechanics. So I temporarily changed that and hired a mechanic to fix the ride. While he was still working on it, I already changed it back, so as soon as he was done he fell into the void. His purpose fulfilled. Halfway year 3 we have 70 launched freefalls, which have brought us to a little over 9 million park value. There is something really ominous about all the vehicles slowly rising up. It feels like some kind of futuristic dystopian hellscape. In August the railway broke down again, but this time I forgot to raise the land before any guests rode it again, so a whole bunch of guests are stuck on this tiny little bit of land. I thought no problem, I'll just drown them, completely forgetting that that kills the park rating, which in turn kills the natural guest generation. This is not actually a problem though, since I can't spend the money we earn fast enough on freefalls anyway, as space is once again running out and it's getting really hard to find an available spot. 
Near the end of October we have 150 launched freefalls and no more space to build any more. These along with the 114 looping coasters give a total of about 13.3 million park value which is more than 66 times the goal. It could have been even higher if I only built launched freefalls, but improvising the challenge along the way instead of meticulously preparing it beforehand is a lot of fun. To finance all of this we managed to get more than 10,000 guests to walk through the entrance and join the nothingness of the void. And with that we beat the scenario with the widest margin I have ever beaten a scenario with. If you want to watch me turn Leafy Lake into Leafy Hill, you can click here to see the previous installment of Marcel Plays RCT. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.